this quick guide on the Ofcom Code of Conduct. The first point in the code is the need to avoid causing harm to the under 18. These are young people. The code defines children as people under 15. The classic example is in reporting sexual offences. You must take care that your report on those subjects is governed not only by the laws of libel and contempt of court, but that a child under 15 will not hear that material and be harmed by it. You need to be aware that it's your responsibility, your liability, to know when there might be a problem. You don't need to memorise the code by heart, but you need to know the broad areas where there are a problem. So watch how you need to approach the code like this. It's in a three-point system. One, awareness. Two, check whether that's within the code. And three, ask if, you're, if any doubt remains. Then you'll be fine. As mentioned, point one of the code deals with potential harm to viewers, especially those under 18 and particularly those under 15 who are defined as children. So one, the first potentially harmful area already mentioned is sexual matters. For example, incest, incest, any mention of that in a court case, the Ofcom code mentions specifically as a thing that could cause harm. Second area of potential harm is drugs and alcohol. Your news report should not glamorise is the taking of drugs and alcohol. Third area of potential harm to young viewers is violence and dangerous behaviour. Fourth area is simply swearing and uh, offensive language. This is just banned. You should never include it, except in certain types of news reporting where the use of that language would be justified in the context of the story. But generally speaking, do not swear. The minute you are anywhere near a microphone, you must get a discipline that you do not swear. And you don't report swearing either. Another area of danger, the occult and especially any kind of mixture together of the occult and violence. Section 2, the section on harm, there's a specific thing here on competitions, and since we run a competition, Date With Fate, a good fun competition, it's great editorially, we have to be aware that that is conducted within the code. First of all, it must be fair, it must be winnable, as it is, and there must be known rules which we've published. Section 3 of the code deals with reporting of crime in some more detail. I won't give you the detail now, just the principle. So the principle in the code 3.1 on crime is that you should do nothing that is likely, remember that likely, that's a pretty broad word, nothing that is likely to encourage or incite the commission of a crime or to lead to disorder. Now, taking those two things in order, nothing that would incite someone to commit a crime. So if you're doing a consumer watchdog type item, like a pyramid selling scam or something like that, that would, it could lead to somebody saying, that's a good idea, I might do that crime myself. Um, secondly, it's a slightly different point, isn't it? You mustn't do anything that would incite disorder. So this would be if you're interviewing extremists, uh, usually of the extreme left or the extreme right. So you can't have your, uh, if you're interviewing the anti-capitalism protesters saying, and we're going out here next Tuesday and we're going to set fire to this bank or your BNP and the far right or whatever. Um, uh, and we're going to have this demo and we're going to cause all this problem. Nothing like that that could incite uh, any sort of violence. That would also be controlled by the law, of course. There is a law against incitement to racial hatred, for example, uh, but it's there also in the code. Copycat, uh, sorry, copycat crime or copycat political violence. Section 4 of the code deals only with programmes that are defined as religious programmes, so it need not necessarily concern us too much in news. Section 5 of the code, on the other hand, is of vital importance to us because it is the part of the code that deals with impartiality, accuracy and avoidance of undue prominence. Point one, there it is. All news must be reported with due impartiality, which in our teaching we usually call balance, and so all news must be reported with, fair, uh, with accuracy. So it's there on the newsroom wall. You've got to be fast, accurate and fair. 5.2 emphasises that mistakes must be corrected immediately. We've dealt with that under the NUJ Code of Conduct and the PCC Code of Conduct as well. It's also in our fatal error system. It is OK to make uh, the occasional literal mistake. We're only human, but you mustn't make reckless mistakes. And if you do make a mistake, you must fess up to that straight away. A lot of Section 5 gives detail, which you can read, on ways in which opinion and fact must be separated. Now, again, we've gone on about this over and over again. Really, it's the main skill 
of a journalist to be able to identify that which is comment and that which is fact. Section 5.13 of the Code says, Broadcasters should not give undue prominence to the views and opinions of particular persons or bodies on matters of political or industrial controversy and matters relating to current public policy in all the programmes included in any service. What they mean by undue prominence of views and opinion, uh, I'll read you the actual text, undue prominence is a significant imbalance of the views aired within coverage of matters of political or industrial controversy or matters relating to current public policy. What this means is, in common language, is bias, political bias, that you're slanting it towards a right-wing view or a left-wing view. You're not allowed to do that. That is undue prominence, giving undue prominence to one opinion rather than another in the news, completely forbidden. An exception would be in a factual programme that's not flagged up as news, such as climate change, why it's a myth or something, and you could flag it up as an authored opinion piece, but you couldn't present that as news of any sort. Section 6 of the Code deals specifically with elections and referendums. There's a great deal of detail in there, um, in addition to what we've already discussed in relation to the Representation of the People Act and the Communication Act 2003, which we did in the law course. Um, All this does, this section, is really define the candidates uh, and parties who are entitled to equal airtime. So, again, it's the method of could there be a problem? Yes, uh, it's an election and that's covered by the code, to look it up, to check, and then ask if you're not clear. There's no point in just reading out all the detail here. Section 6 of the code is there for you when you need to refer to it. Section 7 of the code deals with fairness, and here it's not concerned with the nature of the output, but with the way in which you deal with people you're interviewing, contributors to programmes, trapment of any sort is not allowed by the code. Subterfuge, which is something we've discussed over and over again in relation to investigative journalism, uh, is also dealt with here. Subterfuge can be used, but only when A, there's no other way of getting the story, B, when you have obtained specific consent from uh, Ofcom or your editor at the very least uh, that this can be done, and thirdly, when it's overwhelmingly in the public in basically not a single item or a package on Winnell where this doesn't come up. It's the matter of whether you've got consent to um, film people. We already have the, not the code, but the law, Section 8 of the Human Rights Act. The code is more or less covered by everything in Section 8, but it makes it more explicit that um, in addition to uh, respecting uh, everyone's rights under Section 8, of the Human Rights Act, which already limits the the way in which we can do filming. Uh, In addition, any invasion of privacy, according to the Code, must be warranted. And what they mean by warranted is similar to subterfuge. You must be able to show a reason why you had to do that, why you had to take that, uh, that it was in the public interest to do so, and that you couldn't tell your story Uh, in any other way at all other than by... So there you have Section 8 of the Human Rights Act and uh, felicitously, uh, coincidentally, Section 8 of the Ofcom Code. It's the same number. Uh, 8 is a bad number when it comes to invading people's privacy. Section 9 of the Code is very easy. It concerns sponsorship. You're not allowed to have sponsorship of news or current affairs. Section 10 is commercial references and other matters, and the issue here is product placement. Sometimes you're going to do a new story on a company launching a new type of product. Now, such stories mustn't amount to a form of advertising when you linger lovingly on the product. Uh, You must include balance to say, well, it remains to be seen whether people will like this product. So that brings us to the end of the Ofcom Code of Conduct. Uh, You don't need to memorise every single word of it, but you must be very familiar with all the points that have been raised during this podcast.